Okay, when you first start Flight Simulator, you'll probably be presented like with a screen that looks like this. We want to go to the upper left-hand corner, and then we want to select. We want to select Free Flight. And then we'll be presented with a screen like this. In the top part of the screen, you'll see Current Aircraft. Click on Change. Then you'll be presented with a screen that looks similar to this. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see a um, little box to be checked. It says Show All Variations. Click on it. Uh, then you want, might have to use the scroll bar on the right to scroll to the correct aircraft. You want to scroll down and select the Cessna 172 SP. Any color you prefer, it doesn't really matter. Then click OK. Then we'll be, we will be returned to our free flight screen and now we want to change our location. So up in the upper right you'll see current location. Click on change there. Next you'll get to a screen like this and up at the top left it says select airport and search airports. Type in the word Lawrence and then scroll down and select Lawrence and make sure you select Lawrence Massachusetts because there are several Lawrences. Next at the bottom of the screen you'll see it says choose runway starting position. Uh, use the down arrow and select parking one ramp gate small. And click OK. Then you'll be returned to the free flight screen. In the bottom right hand corner Click on the word words, fly now. Okay, first off, we're going to discuss a few Flight Simulator X uh, operations. When you first load it and start it, you might be presented with different types of Windows modes. Like, for instance, this is the adjustable screen mode. And nobody wants, I don't like to fly that way. By going up into the upper right-hand corner and clicking on the full screen mode, you'll come to this full screen mode. But still, I don't like the menu or the window bars around there. By pressing alternate enter, you'll get rid of the menu bars. Now, should you need to select one of the menus that are at the top, by simply pressing the alternate key, it'll appear like that. And to get rid of it after you've made your selection, you can hold the alternate key down and it will disappear just like that. Okay, now for some explanations of some of the view keys, which are very important. Um, we we have basically there's there's this view, which is called the outside spot view. Uh, if there's locks. There's what's called lock spot and um, the regular spot. I recommend using the lock spot, and you can use the keyboard. Uh, your um, numeric keypad to move around the plane and look around just by holding the left or the right you can go up you can go down you can look all around the plane from the external point of view and to get to that view you just simply press the F11 key and they also have the what's called the virtual pilot view which is inside the plane and you can also scroll around with the keyboard. If you have a yoke by the way you can use your hat switch to do the same thing which is much nicer actually. If you don't have a a, um, a yoke then you can use your keyboard. So you can look all around. You can also you, you can press the plus and the minus key up next to the backspace key on your keyboard to move in and out. You can do that in inside the virtual cockpit or you can also do that outside the plane. So that means you can look from almost any point of view any way you want. So that's to get to the again to get to the virtual cockpit you press the F9 key. To get to the uh, external View, you press the F, the spotting view. You press 11. If you want to look at, if you want to look down, like looking at a map of where you are, you can press the F12 key, and that will give you a 
a view where you're looking straight down. And again, you can zoom in and out on that. You can zoom right down to your plane, or you can zoom way back. At, at, one, at a particular point, as you zoom out, you'll notice that the map will turn. And that's because when you get further and further out, it's you can't even see the plane. So the plane, if you have it set that way, the map will automatically orientate it to to a north-south direction. Uh, whereas when you get closer, if you have it set that way, it orientates according to the direction of the plane. As you can see, the plane's pointed in the direction in which we're viewing. And this this is very handy for navigating around the the uh, airport that particular view. Um, and then lastly we, we press the F10 key takes us inside the cockpit and it's a fixed co cockpit view. Uh, once you're in the um, fixed panel view which shows you their instrument panel you can press the W key to look at the various the screens that are available there. And we'll start out with the, f the full uh, no instrument panel screen. If you want to just look outside without the instrument panel, you press the W key and it will s cycle through these. The next one after that is the um, medium size panel, full size panel. This is used. This is primarily used to set your radios on the right, which we'll get to at a later date. Uh, then you have your your uh, small panel view. That's the one to use for flying if you're going to use this particular mode. And then we also have a full screen view with just the basic instruments so you can see what you're doing while you get a good view of what's outside. And again, you press the W key to cycle through those. Okay, now we're, so that's the basic views for the, for the airplane to, to cycle through them again. F9 key gives you your virtual cockpit which allows you to look around. F10 gives you your fixed panel view. F11 gives you your outside view, external view of the airplane. And F12 gives you your top-down view. You can th almost think of it as being a, a map if you want. All right, so we're going to start the plane now, and we're going to go to the fixed panel panel view. And first off, we're going to if you follow the the cursor, there's a cursor right here. Follow it down to the bottom of the screen, and we're going to turn the master battery switch on, both of them. We're going to turn the beacon light on, the nav strobe lights on, our avionics on move our mixture control so it's fully in. You can also do that with uh, your yoke if you have it. Make sure it's fully in. Set the throttle to idle all the way out. Uh, next we want to adjust our trim for takeoff. Here's our trim right here. And you'll notice there's a TO right here. You want to set it so that it's on the TO. You can do it like this. Up and down like that. And we're just about ready to go. And now over here on our left is our magnetos. And you see there's a start button there. Press to start the engines. And we can hear the engines have started. Now we're ready to go. Next we want to taxi, taxi and take off. <coughs> Normally we'd contact the tower, but we're going to get to that in a later lesson. Air traffic control. We're going to fly without air traffic control. All right. So to taxi the plane, you just give it a little bit of throttle. Oh, before we take off, there might be one thing I, I forgot to mention. One thing: if you have your <coughs> numlock key lit and you're in the fixed panel view, you have you can press the number number keys to look around the plane. Plane the number four key to look to the left, five key looks to the right, the two key looks back. The 8 key looks straight ahead, the 7 key looks to the front left, 9 key looks to the front right, 1 key looks to the back left, and the 3 key looks to the back right, so you can look around your plane. I, I like to fly using the uh, virtual pilot view actually, so I will go into that. 
Uh, we're zoomed, in this particular view, we're zoomed back a little bit, so I'm going to press the plus key and zoom in a little bit. There we go. And because I have a, um, a yoke, I can use the hat switch on the top to look around, which is a lot of, which is very realistic. All right, so we're ready to go. So we'll increase the throttle. And I'm going to assume you have the yoke from now on. So push your throttle forward a little bit to get the plane rolling. Once the plane is rolling, throttle back, not all the way off, but just a little bit. Turn the plane, turn the steering wheel to turn. Don't get going too fast. If you go too fast, you won't be able to control the plane on the ground. It's very hard to control when you're going too fast. We're going to taxi, we're going to taxi down to runway five. Which if we look on the map here, we look on our top-down view, is now off to our right. We're going to go down this taxiway and take a right. Whoop, almost going by it here. Hit the brakes. Whoop, going on the grass a little bit here. It's not good for the plane. If you have your plane set to... Uh, to uh, very realistic conditions, you'll damage the plane by going off the runway like that onto grass. Can damage the plane, I should say. So now we're taxiing down. Oh, there's a plane taking off on the right. And we're going a little fast. I'm going to cut back on the throttle just a hair. Again, we'll go to the top down view so you can see where we're going. We want to bear right here at this intersection. Moving a little fast, I'm cutting back on the throttle again. And we'll go to the top down view again so you can see where we are. We're approaching runway 5. And let's throttle back a little bit just to slow down. back all the way, put my brakes on, make the turn, give it some more throttle now, go out under the runway, and line up for a takeoff. Now normally, there might be planes landing right now, but they, probably not, so it's not a very busy airport. Uh, normally you'd be coordinating all this with air traffic control and ground control, but we're going to be skipping that for, now, for this lesson here. Alright, stop the plane, we're ready for takeoff. I want you to stop the plane, make sure you're lined up with the center of the runway, and gradually increase the throttle to full throttle. We've already set our, our trim for takeoff. If you hadn't set it, you should set it, make sure it's set by now, or you won't take off, you won't be able to take off properly. But we're just going to take off, and we're going to climb to, and level off at 3,000 feet. Okay, you just... Just keep the plane going. If you had the, if the trim set properly, the plane will take off when it reaches a proper speed. All right, now I'm going to switch to the panel view so you can look at the instruments and you can see we're, we're climbing. I'm going to point out some of the instruments here as we climb. Just follow the, again, follow the arrow. This on the left is our speed right here. This right here is, is our artificial horizon. It's called the attitude indicator. This right here is our altimeter. It tells us how, how, um, uh, what our altitude is. And this here is our turn indicator. It tells us whether we're turning left or right. I'll make a quick left turn here so you can see it move. And now turn back to the right. You see it turn that way. It turns in the direction of the plane. You'll notice when we turn, the attitude indicator goes in the opposite direction because it's simulating the horizon. Alright, this here is our compass that tells us our heading. And this is our vertical speed indicator, which tells us our rate of climb in hundreds of feet. So right right currently we're climbing at approximately 900 feet per minute. And probably one other instrument uh, is the RPM indicator. That tells you how much power, how much throttle you have are using it currently. 
We're going to level off at uh, 2,000 feet. And I'm going to go back to the virtual pilot mode here. So we can look around a little bit. There's the Miramac River. And out to the north here. And I'm going to go back to this fixed panel view here. Now we're reaching our altitude. So now we want to put the nose down. We push forward on the yoke. The proper way is to push forward on the yoke until you're level and then adjust your trim until you can relieve the pressure on your yoke. And that will maintain it. That will maintain that orientation. You also probably want to cut back on your throttle. We have full throttle. You keep it, keep it full throttle while you're taking off. To maintain a particular speed um, is a combination of setting the trim properly and, and uh, pro power properly. Once you're leveled off and trimmed, you, by increasing the power you'll climb and by decreasing the power you'll descend. You don't use the trim, which puts the nose up and down, to descend or climb. You use the throttle once you're trimmed off. If you adjust the trim, you can increase or decrease the speed. By putting the nose down, you will increase the speed. You might have to adjust the power to maintain it, but just remember you use the, the trim to, once you're leveled and trimmed, you use the, the, um, the trim to, to increase or decrease your speed, and you use the throttle to climb or descend. So here we are, almost leveled off. We climbed a little bit too high, so I can cut back on the throttle just a hair and descend a little bit. You'll notice I cut back. I cut back on the throttle, and now we're starting to descend a little. Hmm. Must have hit an air pocket. We just went down. Okay, now I'll just increase the throttle just a hair, just to maintain that level flight. And here we are. Level and flying at 2,000 feet and a speed of about 108, 109 knots. The plane uses knots, by the way, not miles per hour, so we're actually probably going about 115, 120 miles per hour. And that ends the lesson. We took off, we, tack we started the plane, we taxied, we took off, and we leveled the plane off.